Hey everybody, uh, two quick disclaimers before we begin. First is that this video was intentionally supposed to get done and made by January 11th, the time when Shin Ultraman actually premiered in the US, but uh, because one monstrous moment got delayed for everybody, obviously this video didn't come out on January 11th. So things that I say about Shin Ultraman's release aren't exactly valid anymore, but they're very minor and doesn't really impact the entire message of the video, but I do allude to Shin Ultraman's theatrical release, so there's that. And the second disclaimer is that this video is not going to be really heavily edited. Uh, that's because the Ultra Q video that came out about a week ago when this video is supposed to come out, unless one monstrous moment gets delayed a second time, uh, but yeah, uh, the Ultra Q video that I just made, editing wise, really kicked my butt. So I kind of need a break from something, you know, some like actual serious editing. So this is going to be pretty rough editing. I might have a picture up here and or there, uh, but most of all, you'll just be seeing a speed drawing of the thumbnail picture that I did. Uh, that'll be the main footage there. Oh, and by the way, after this video, please go check out my Ultra Q video. I would really, really appreciate it if you did. I put a lot of work into it. But yeah, with those out of the way, onto the video. I hope you enjoy. For my one monstrous moment, I thought it would be fitting that I choose a scene from the Ultraman franchise. Especially since this is to celebrate the wide theatrical release of Shin Ultraman in the US. Also because I have talked about Ultraman multiple times on this channel. Specifically though, I'll be taking a look at a scene from the original Ultraman. While I could choose a scene from one of the episodes that's been directly adapted by Shin Ultraman, I'm instead choosing a scene that I believe has vastly impacted the entirety of the franchise, including Shin Ultraman. That scene is from episode 37 titled, The Little Hero. Not only is this a great episode, with some unfortunate elements that have not aged well, but I believe this is a must watch for any Ultraman fan. But just in case you don't feel like watching the episode or need a reminder, here's a quick summary of what happens in the episode. An evil kaiju, Geronimon, has started to resurrect kaiju that Ultraman and the Science Patrol have previously defeated. However, Geronimon accidentally resurrected the friendly kaiju, Pigmon, who travels to Japan to warn the Science Patrol about the oncoming disaster. At the same time, best character Ide has not been acting like himself as his self-confidence is at an all-time low. Ide reveals to Hayata, who's secretly Ultraman in case you didn't know, that he no longer sees the point in fighting all these kaiju and invaders when Ultraman is the one who ends up defeating the enemy by the end. As a side note, this is a really great question and bringing this question up so early on into the franchise just goes to show you how ahead of its time Ultraman was. Anyways, the Science Patrol heads to the island where the kaiju are being brought back to life. This is where we get to the scene I want to talk about. Hayata and Ide are attacked by the recently brought back to life Dorako. All Ide is doing is calling for Ultraman to come to the rescue and wondering why Ultraman isn't showing up. Hayata scolds Ide telling him that Ultraman will not show up until they have tried their absolute best, but it still doesn't get through to Ide. Dorako is about to come after Ide which makes Hayata almost transform into Ultraman, but after hearing Ide continue to cry out to Ultraman, Hayata decides not to. Before Dorako can strike Ide, Pigmon pops up and distracts the brute, rescuing Ide. Unfortunately, this results in Pigmon sacrificing himself. With Pigmon's sacrifice and a hard slap from Hayata, does Ide finally gain the confidence to not only fight Dorako, but to actually defeat him with his new invention. Now, there's two reasons why I say this is the most important scene in the franchise. First is Pigmon fighting alongside the Science Patrol. While well, yes, this isn't the first time Pigmon sacrifices himself to protect humans, this is the first time a kaiju directly befriends and fights alongside the main cast. 
This gives a sense that we should strive for peace or coexistence between humans and kaiju. This will be something that we see in several other Ultraman series, even as recent as Ultraman Decker. This shows that not all kaiju are inherently evil. The second and most important reason this is the most important scene in the entire franchise is Hayata's refusal to fight as Ultraman. At least in this particular moment, because he does transform into Ultraman later on in the episode after Ide finally fights back. But anyways, this is what I believe to be the biggest distinction between Ultraman and other superheroes. Most superheroes will go to fight the villain regardless of whether or not people are fighting back. In fact, most of the time it's usually the hero who's only able to fight the villains. It makes sense because those heroes are supposed to save the day. Here though, Ultraman is directly stating that Ultraman himself is not here to save humanity, as he will only come after humanity has given it our best to defend ourselves or to solve the problem. If Ultraman is not here to save us, then why does he fight to protect humanity? Ultraman does care deeply for humanity and he is here to help us when we need him, as well as teach us how to become better people. This has been a staple for the entire franchise and most of the time is the reason Ultraman doesn't show up until the last moment, or in this case, the end of the episode. This is especially present in Shin Ultraman, but I think it's best that I leave that up for you to discover for yourself when you go watch Shin Ultraman. You should watch it because it's a good movie and it's literally playing in US theaters right now, so go watch it. Unless you're watching this in the future, in that case, if it's on physical media, buy it and watch it, please. Anyways, that has been my one monstrous moment. If you like this video, why don't you check out some of the other videos I've made and subscribe to check out future videos. Press the like button if you love Ultraman and Kaiju. Press the dislike button if you think Ede was right to give up. Leave a comment telling me what I'm doing right and what I'm doing wrong. With that said, thank you so much for watching. I hope you have a fantastic day. Take care and shwatch!